How's it going, everyone? This is the George here, and today we are continuing the mini Alfred Hitchcock series of reviews with Alfred Hitchcock's favorite movie that he made, Shadow of a Doubt. As I said, this was directed by Alfred Hitchcock and stars Teresa Wright and Joseph Cotton in this cat and mouse murder mystery where, where a girl named Charlie is getting bored with how life is going at home and wants her Uncle Charlie, one of her favorite people of all time, to come visit. Meanwhile, Uncle Charlie decides to go, vi go visit him, not realizing Charlie wants him to come, and he's excited to see his family, especially his favorite niece, Charlie. But we soon discover that Uncle Charlie is not who he seems to be. And eventually, we discover that Uncle Charlie is involved in a lot of, a lot of murders and later reveals to be the Merry Widow Killer. So Alfred Hitchcock has said that this is his favorite movie. And it's kind of a mystery that this is his favorite movie, not something like Psycho, Rear Window, or Vertical. But one of the things that he loves about this movie is character. And obviously, when it comes to this movie, there is the character development regarding Uncle Charlie. Because when you first meet this character, you don't know why he's escaping. And when he's, But when he's with his family, he seems very warm and caring. He loves his, his nieces and nephews, particularly his niece, Charlie. He loves his sister, Charlie's mom. But then you start to see some peculiar behavior with Charlie. Like, or Uncle Charlie, because there's two Charlies in this movie, so we got to emphasize which Charlie is which. So Uncle Charlie, for some reason, he doesn't want his face to be seen when he's on the train, train, and he pretends to be sick. Or we assume he's sick at first, but then when he gets off the train, train, he reassures Charlie that he is not sick. But it's kind of weird that that he's pretending to be sick. Then when he sees something in the newspaper, he tries to make a trick out of it or house, so that way no one can be able to see what the newspaper says. He gets in trouble for it because Dad doesn't want the newspaper to be messed with. Then he kind of freaks out a little bit, but when Charlie, his niece, tries to grab something that could show his involvement in some in a certain, in a certain crime. But it, but the most interesting thing is that he doesn't want his picture to be taken when these two guys come in that that are revealed to be detectives come in and they're pretending to just want pictures of the family and uncle Charlie wants to know part of it. And when uncle Charlie gets his picture taken, he demands it back. Like he really wants it back. And you're one. And we're all wondering to ourselves, why does he want his picture taken? Why does he not want anything involving him, him to be discovered in the newspaper? Why is he avoiding all these people on the train? Why was he running away at the beginning of the movie to begin with? And then, with some buildup, we all discover, including Charlie, that Uncle Charlie has killed some widows. He's killed some widows who were left with a lot of money. And the realization is just horrifying. Teresa Wright does a great job of portraying Charlie, Uncle Charlie's niece. And Joseph Cotton does a brilliant job of portraying Uncle Charlie. And they have this really special relationship that is highlighted in this movie. And then it takes a turn once this discovery is made and once Uncle Charlie realizes that she knows. So for the first half of the movie, you've got, got this great relationship between them. them she's happy that, that her Uncle Charlie's here. Feels like things are, are going in the right direction at home. And Uncle Charlie seems really happy to be seeing his family, particularly his favorite niece. But then comes that discovery. And I must say, the score of this movie is done brilliantly. It, it builds up a lot of suspense. There's this waltz theme that is used a lot in this movie. And it plays a key role, particularly with, with the theme of this movie, which Uncle Charlie is known for killing a lot of widows. And it becomes even more of a thing after... Charlie discovers what her uncle Charlie did when she supports her, her little sister, not wanting to sit near uncle Charlie when she becomes more, more argumentative or arguing more with him at, at the dinner table, particularly when he reveals his disdain for widows and his facial expression and the zooming in of just how cold hearted he is. 
is and how he doesn't care about them when he's talking about them. And it just shows his guilt. And that's when the relationship between these two change because he's become, he's like watching her every move now. Now she doesn't want to be near him. She went from loving him to being so disappointed, hurt, and betrayed by what he has done. And she, wa she wants to reveal what he did, but she also knows it's going to break her mom's heart. And then something happens in the movie when, when we discover that there was another suspect and they believe that he was the real widow killer. And at first you're, and this is kind of different from other murder mysteries. Like usually in, in the theme of Alfred for Hitchcock movies or just some murder mysteries in general, you would think that the character could come off free or maybe the, the character isn't that uncle Charlie basically tells Charlie that he, that he is guilty of all this. And then the detectives start pursuing it. When someone who was also a suspect was confronted by police and ended up getting killed, and they believe that that person was the real widow killer. And you know, Uncle Charlie, he thinks at first, you know, he can relax, but Charlie knows the truth, and he also sees how close she is to one of the detectives. That's the one thing I don't like about this movie this forced romance between Charlie and one of the, the detectives. It just comes out of nowhere. Like you don't, I, I get Alfred Hitchcock. That's a theme in his movies to have a romance angle, but it wasn't necessary in this one. You didn't really need to have a love story in this one. I feel like the story between a, a niece discovering her favorite uncle is a murderer and how that impacts her and their relationship. I think that was a great angle to go with in this movie. But again, you're starting to see Charlie, Uncle Charlie morphing into the monster that we seem to be. He starts doing little things that could possibly harm or kill Charlie. He does something to one of the steps going up her house. Then he lock before that he locks her and the detective, or not locks, but like uses this bad shed door to keep them in there. And then later on, she's stuck in there while the car is running and the car is during a lot of smoke and you're worried this, char this character might suffocate. Another thing that I, that I like a lot in this movie as well is that there's there's like these hints of, of murder that make Charlie feel uncomfortable. Well, her father has this friend named Herb and he keeps talking about murder and they keep talking back and forth about like, how would you murder someone? Could you put like a, put a small amount amount of poison in someone's tea to poison them? can you poison them with mushrooms just talking about how to murder someone and and while this is happening she knows her uncle charlie killed a few women and it's just bugging her and she kind of brings up a good point why are you talking about murdering each other like this is not normal behavior i don't know what happened in the 1940s i don't know how adults talked in the 1940s but talking about murdering people i, I agree with charlie like why are you talking about stuff like that it, this film also highlights something that I kind of noticed with a lot of older movies. It's that some characters are very naive when it comes to the behavior of people they like a lot being murderers. It's a theme that I noticed in quite a few movies. The Bad Seed is one of those movies where a character just seems very naive of certain behavior of a character they like. In this case, it's Charlie's mom who is uncle Charlie's brother. And she lo and this is one of the reasons why Charlie doesn't want to reveal uncle Charlie's a murderer because he doesn't know how she doesn't know how she's going to take it. it. It could just very well break her heart. I also, I feel like the ending kind of felt a little bit rushed, Rushed. He's, he's going off, off to another town and he's, and he, invite charlie to come come on the train with him say goodbye and she's and he's stalling her leaving and, and he's about to throw her off the train as it's going but she she moves and he accidentally falls out the train and charlie and the detective that has feelings for her her basically keep it a secret because they don't know how charlie's mom's gonna take it so this is a movie that even though the Uncle Charlie can no longer do any harm to anyone. He can no longer bother Charlie. There's really no happy ending because no one's really going to know the full truth outside of Charlie and this detective. And that's the sad thing. 
But overall, when it comes to Shadow of the Doubt, the thing that I love about this movie, besides the murder mystery that, that's happening, that kind of hits close to home for Charlie when she realizes it's her Uncle Charlie, and how when like sec a secret can change the relationship of two family members. But also, just like the characterization of Uncle Charlie, seeing him morph into what he really was at first we see him as this mysterious character that's trying to escape when we see him with his family he seems like this loving caring uncle and brother but once he he realizes that someone even his favorite niece knows his secret he morphs into this monster and not a monster monster but this monster that doesn't care that that he could possibly kill his niece as long as his secret, the truth about what he really did does not come out. Outside of a couple of things with the rush ending and a forced relationship or love story, I think Alf I think Shadow of a Doubt is one of my favorite Alfred Hitchcock movies. It's not up there with Rear Window, Vertical, or Psycho, but I'm going to give Shadow of a Doubt an A. This is a movie that I highly recommend you guys check out. I remember I discovered this movie on TCM, which is where I discover a lot of old movies. And it's been one of my favorites to watch from Alfred Hitchcock. So what are your thoughts on Shadow of a Doubt? Did you love it? Did you hate it? And, and I'm trying to think because I feel like I'm going to ask the same question I ask with all these Alfred Hitchcock movies. Okay, how about this one? What Alfred Hitchcock movie that is not a household name is your favorite movie? Because I know a lot of people are, are usually going to say Rear Window, Vertigo, North by Northwest, or Psycho. But let's go with the Alfred Hitchcock movies that are not household names. Like I said, Shadow of a Doubt is probably my favorite. That's not a typical household name. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below. And I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe already if you haven't. Please share us with someone that loves Alfred Hitchcock movies. And I hope to see you guys real soon. Take care, everyone.